Hello, Pastor Doug, back again with another video. Today I want to do a response video, and this is from a Catholic website I found, and it says, Some tough questions for Protestants. Since I'm a Protestant pastor, I thought I would give this a take. So let's read the overall uh, statement. These questions below are impossible for a believer in Sola Scriptura to answer, since no verse or combination of verses in Scripture provide the required information. Okay, so we're going to go through these, these statements, and I'm going to do this on the cold, so let's see what happens. So provide a verse which teaches, oh, we're going to do verse by memory, this is going to be an interesting challenge. It says, God created the world and the universe out of nothing. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We start with God, and then everything is created. Now, okay, the word nothing is not literally there. But the doctrine of ex nihilo creation, that God creates out of nothing, literally comes from Genesis chapter 1. So, that was easy. It says, Scripture is the sole authority, i.e. there is no other authority for learning about God and or salvation. Okay, that's not what sola scriptura means. The doctrine of sola scriptura teaches that Scripture is the final authority. If you read, say, the Westminster uh, Confession of Faith, there are subordinate authorities, the creeds itself, history, reason, the church. The church does have authority. How do we know the church has authority? Because Scripture says the church has authority. But the notion that Scripture is the final authority, we read in the pastorals that all Scripture is God-breathed. We read in Psalm 119, um, oh, the largest psalm on the authority of Scripture. The Lord Jesus frequently referred to Scripture, have you not read? Have you not read in Isaiah? You know, all through Scripture, it's stated. We are not to go beyond what is written, as Paul argues. So, yeah, it's directly taught. But again, sola scriptura does not mean Scripture is the only authority and there's no other authorities. It's the supreme authority. It's the final authority all right so salvation is attained through faith alone you got to be kidding me ephesians uh, 2 8 through 9 comes to mind romans chapter 3 john chapter 6 first peter chapter 2 uh, that's found throughout scripture now they're gonna say well the word alone is not used well it says we're saved by faith and not by works that's the concept so that one's easy tells us how we know that the relation of jesus christ ended with the death of the last apostle. Ephesians, sorry, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, that in the end of the age that we have the revelation of Jesus Christ, that the apostles are the only ones who are given authority that's taught throughout the Gospels. So, yeah, that's, that's in Scripture. The final revelation is with Jesus Christ and his apostles. Okay. Provide a list of the canonical books of the Old Testament. You're right. The canonical books, and I assume we're going to get the New Testament. Yep, there is not a list in the Bible that gives a list of the books that are in Scripture. However, the church, and the church does have subordinate authority, bears witness to the canon. And so when the canon came together, the church didn't create books of the Bible. It bore witness to the apostolic authority. Give an example. The Old Testament canon was known to the Lord Jesus and those before him. So the canon was closed before there was ever a Roman Catholic Church. Also, in the New Testament, although Paul, though, sorry, Peter calls Paul's work scripture, so we have that, so Paul's works are in, we have a witness that the scriptures are authoritative because they're from God. The church doesn't make the canon. God makes the canon. And then the church bore witness to that canon. It didn't go through and say, hey, we need someone to write the book of Matthew. Go, read the, go write the gospel of Matthew. Instead, it came about in the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries when there was debates about the canon. The church said, you know what? That which is apostolic must be in the New Testament. So the church bore witness to the canon. It did not create the canon. Explains the doctrine of Trinity. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. However, the concept clearly clearly is. The Bible clearly teaches there is only one God. The Bible clearly teaches that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. And the Bible clearly teaches the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are different. So yes, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And I love the word Trinity. Again, the church has authority. It's subordinate. But the concept of the Trinity is biblical. 
I'd love to ask this person, are you actually saying the Trinity is not biblical? We get the systematic name Trinity again because that's what the Bible teaches. Tells us the name of the beloved disciple. No, nope, doesn't. You're right. We don't know who that is. There's a guess it's John the Apostle, no doubt just from the context, and again, the testimony of the church history, but that's not a critical thing. I mean, we, we technically don't know who that is. Contains the names of the author of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and the Acts of the Apostles. You're right. The Gospel of Matthew doesn't tell us who wrote Matthew. A, that's not critical, but more importantly, again, as we got back to the canon, the church bears witness that it is Matthew. So, the name Matthew, or Mark, or Luke, or John, or the Acts, or, or Luke who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, and obviously Luke and the Acts of the Apostles go very much together, it's clearly the same, uh, same author. The church, we know that, because again, the church bears witness. But the church doesn't have authority over scripture you can have only one supreme authority and so it's a choice between sola scriptura the bible being the word of god the final word of god or sola ecclesia that a church bureaucracy in this case in rome has the final authority there is no doubt which one the bible talks a lot more about there is nowhere in scripture at all any hint that there's a bishop in Rome who has final authority, or a magisterium in Rome that has any authority. It is the teaching of Scripture that Scripture has authority because it's God-breathed. So let's move on. Tells us the Holy Spirit is one of the three persons of the Trinity. Well, the Holy Spirit is described as God and is talked about as a he, not an it. So that is the logical extension. Again, how do we prove the doctrine of tr the Trinity? Yes, church history. Yes, the great creeds help. But we believe it because that's what scripture teaches so the holy spirit the deity of the holy spirit is very much in scripture anyways tells us jesus was both fully god and fully man from the moment of conception how do we know the divinity wasn't infused later in his life or tells us jesus christ is one person with two natures human and divine and not some other combination of two na uh, natures one or one or both being less than complete. All right, this is the doctrine of hypostatic union, that Jesus Christ is fully man, fully God. Again, when the church came together and created those doctrines, or I might, should I better say affirm those doctrines, and the Apostles' Creed, in particular the Nicene Creed, oh, and by the way, there was no Roman Catholic Church in the 2nd and 3rd century, if you want to be technical about it, or even into the fourth century, in, in the sense of that there is one person universally recognized as the complete head of the church, and that, that is the Bishop of Rome. That's not in the early church, my friends. That's not in the historical record, and certainly not in Scripture. Here, however, yes, the church bore witness to the doctrine of the hypostatic union because there was a debate and there was a rise of heretics, but where did they go to for final authority? Go read the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea didn't say, Oh, Bishop of Rome, please tell us what the answer is. No, 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 no. They got together, mostly Eastern bishops, by the way, and they got together and they went to Scripture. They went to their final authority. If you read the early church fathers, they bear witness to the authority of Scripture as the final authority. So what's the last question? Tells us Jesus is the same substance of divinity as God the Father. Again, same answer. The Bible clearly teaches Jesus is divine. He is he is worshipped. He you know, he is the name Jesus and the Father are put together as both having deity but different. Go read John chapter one verses one through five. Go read what fifteen through eighteen. The deity of the Son is clearly shown. Yes, we got into a more technical description later in the Council of Nicaea and into the Athanasian creeds about the nature of divinity and the substance of God and all Protestants affirm those creeds but we get the final authority from scripture and we go to those scriptures and that's how we correct the church so again I think this person is dealing with maybe a false understanding of, of Protestantism or maybe he's dealing with Protestants who don't understand the doctrine of sola scriptura who just believe you know they have the Bible, that's it, and they ignore all church history. 
Yeah, that's crazy. That's not historical Protestantism. Again, go read the early Protestants. Go read the, their great creeds. They affirm the witness of the early church. They think the church has authority. They just correctly believe the final authority is Scripture. And again, to conclude this video, I just want to ask, which one is much more clearly taught in Scripture? The Scripture is the final authority or some bishop in Rome? There is no doubt which one time and time again the scriptures affirm. Well, I hope that helps. I, I, I did it from the top of my mind. I could have done a much more detailed references to scripture if I was um, going in and just writing down and cutting pacing verses, but I like doing these off the cuff. I hope that helps. And as always, Christ's grace and peace to you all. Amen.